Hello everyone and welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today we'll be taking you through interactions in jQuery UI. In this video we'll see what interactions are, their syntax and then we'll see different types of interactions present in jQuery. So before we begin let me tell you guys that we have regular updates on multiple technology videos. So if you are a tech geek in a continuous hunt for the latest technological trends then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and press that bell icon to never miss any updates from Simply Learn. So without any further delay, let's get started. So far, we have covered widgets and their usage in the past few videos. Widgets make it easier for us to perform a function or access a service with less code required. We came across different types of widgets and their usage. It's quite easy to use widgets in jQuery. All we have to do is to call the widget with specific name and that's it. jQuery even allows us to make customizations in widgets, right? Now, talking about interactions, they have almost the same syntax as widgets, but the working and customizations makes the difference. Interactions basically let the user perform various actions on the DOM element with the help of mouse without changing the appearance of the element. The first interaction we'll be going through today is the draggable interaction in jQuery. This interaction enables draggable functionality to any DOM element. It is used to move the draggable object by clicking on it with the mouse and dragging it anywhere within the viewport. This interaction allows us to move a particular element whether it be an image or a box or anything movable across the screen. We can customize the way we can move the box with the help of certain customizations as well. Let's go through the official jQuery UI website to see the working of this interaction and then we'll use it in our own program. Here we are on the official website of jQuery UI and you can see over here we have all the interactions which are placed differently from widgets, right? We have all the interactions over here then we have widgets as well. Click on the draggable interaction. Draggable interaction is the first interaction available here. Click on it and it will take us to a new page. You can see over here we have a box with some text present inside it which says drag me around. Click and hold over the box and try to drag it. We are able to drag it here, right? So let's achieve this thing in our own program now and then we'll go through the customizations as well. Here we are in the VS code. Now we'll do the draggable thing with two different boxes. So let's add them quickly. What we'll do is We'll write here inside the body tag, we'll use the div tag, we'll write here div and inside this div tag we'll create another division for box 1. So we'll write here div, id is equal to let's say, okay, we'll use class for this. So we'll write here class is equal to let's say box and we'll close this div tag. Now we'll write something inside it. So let's say we are writing here box 1. Now we'll create another box, for that we have to use another div tag. We'll write here div, class is going to be the same. We'll write here box. Then we'll write here inside this box 2 let's say. Fine. Save this program. And you can see here we have some text present on the screen which says box 1 and box 2. So let's style these boxes as well. What we'll do is we'll write here inside the head tag. We'll use the style tag for this. So we'll write here style. And inside this we are going to make some style changes in these boxes. So we'll write here box because box is the class. We'll write here dot box. Now inside this we'll write, let's say we are using border. Border is going to be let's say 5 pixel solid and let's say black in color. Fine. Let's keep it simple for now. We'll use the height over here. We'll write here height as let's say 100 pixels. Then we'll define width as well. Width is again going to be 100 pixels. And finally after this we'll write here margin. Margin is going to be let's say 10 pixels. And we'll align this text to the center. So we'll write here text align at this center. Fine. Now we are done with it. Save the program. And you can see we have two boxes now. The next thing we want to do is we want to move these boxes with the help of a mouse button, right? For that we have to use the draggable interaction from jQuery UI. We discussed earlier that the syntax remains almost the same for interactions and widgets in jQuery. So let's add the interaction to our program now. Here we are in the JavaScript file and what we'll do is we'll write here dollar. 
now we need to access these boxes for that we have the class as box so we'll write here dot box and then we'll write here dot draggable it is a method so we'll use parenthesis now that's it guys we are done now we'll be able to move those boxes in our browser save the program and try doing it so you can see we are now able to move these boxes across the browser we are able to move them freely try moving them to the bottom and you can see the scroll bar appearing over here right the same thing will happen if we try to move it horizontally if we try to move it horizontally you can see the scroll bar at the bottom of our browser so we are good to go with that now talking about the customizations we have in this interaction we can control the dragging path of the element we can either make it draggable along the x axis which means horizontally or along the y axis which means vertically so for that we have to write here inside this we have to use curly braces for customizations the same thing we did with widgets as well now we'll write over here axis axis we are going to define so let's say we are writing here x we are going to drag the box along the x axis now save the program and you can see we are not able to move the box towards the bottom side right we are not able to move the box along the y axis what we can do is we can move this box horizontally only because we have defined the axis as x and now we will be able to move the box horizontally only the next thing we can do is we can also change the cursor upon dragging the box to make it look a bit more interactive what we have to do is we have to write here after a comma we have to write here cursor and we have to define here grabbing fine this is the cursor name now save the program and you will notice on dragging the element the cursor changes right we can also change the opacity of this element on dragging you can see we have the opacity as one because the black color is completely visible for now we can change it just right here after a comma opacity and we'll define the opacity as let's say 0.5 fine now save the program try to drag this box and you can see on dragging the opacity changes to 0.5 of this particular box the same thing will go for box 2 as well because we have defined the axis as x we are not able to move the box in other directions so let's comment this axis for now save it now and you can see now we are able to move these boxes freely fine the next thing we can do here is we can also limit the dragging area of this box we can either limit it to the division or to the document as well so for that we have to define a property over here we have to write here after a comma containment and then we have to write here either parent for division and for document we have to write here document only so let's do it with parent save the program and you can see the area is limited now we can drag it till here only we can't drag it out of this box because we have a division over here defined as well and these boxes are present inside that division if you go back to the html document you can see here we have this div tag as well we can move these boxes only inside this div tag we can't go out of this so this is how we can limit the dragging area of a particular element another property we can use is the grid property so let's write here first and then you can understand it much better i guess so we'll write here grid and we'll define the grid inside these brackets we'll write here 300 comma 300 now save the program and you guys will get it much better but before that let's comment this piece of code we are not going to limit the draggable area of these boxes save it now and now on dragging the box you can see that it automatically stops after 300 pixels and the in between movement of the box is not visible let me zoom out the browser for you and you can see it more clearly now you can see the box stopping after 300 pixels and the in between movement of this box is not visible so this is how we can use the grid property to make it look more interactive to the user now the last two properties we are going to discuss today are the snap and the snap tolerance properties if the snap property is set to true then the two boxes will stick together if closer to each other the snap tolerance property defines the distance between the elements to stick together so let's use them here first we'll comment this grid as well we'll write here after this 
snap so snap is a boolean property we'll write here true for that and we'll write here snap tolerance fine and we'll set snap tolerance to let's say 100 pixels this is in pixels keep this thing in mind now if the distance between the two boxes at any time becomes 100 or less than 100 then both the boxes will stick together save the program and you can see over here that moving the first box near to the second one they are sticking together right the snap tolerance is 100 it means that if we try to bring the box near to box 2 and the distance between them is either 100 or less than that then the boxes will stick together so this is how we can use the draggable interaction to make our web page more interactive i hope you guys got it the basic definition states that interactions let the user perform various actions on the DOM element with the help of the mouse without changing the actual appearance of the DOM element. The sortable interaction we'll be going through today is used to sort elements just by dragging them. So let's go through the jQuery UI website quickly and then we'll use it in our own program. Here we are on the official website of jQuery UI. We'll go to the sortable interaction directly. Here it is. Click on it. And here you can see we have a list of items. We can sort them according to our needs. If we pick any one of them from its position and if we try to drag it to another place, you can see we can do so because of the sortable interaction in jQuery UI. The sortable interaction enables a group of DOM elements to be sortable. Click on it and drag the element to a new spot within the list and all the other items will adjust according to this particular item. It shares all the properties of the draggable interaction by default. We'll see them after going through the syntax of this interaction. So let's move on to the VS Code and we'll try to implement this thing in our own program now. Here we are on the VS Code. The first thing we'll be doing is to add those elements to our web page. For that, what we'll do is we'll take a div tag and we'll define the list inside that particular div tag. We'll write here div, close it. Now what we have to do is we have to declare an unordered list. For that we'll use the ul tag. We'll write here ul. Class is going to be let's say sort. We'll close this tag and now inside this we'll define the list. Fine. We'll use the li tag for that. We'll write here li. id is equals to let's say sortable. We are giving all these elements ids because we want to style them as well. So for styling purpose, we'll be using the id attribute. We'll close it and here we'll write the name of item, let's say item 1. We'll copy this piece of code from here. We'll paste it certain times. And then we'll change the name of items. Fine. We'll write here item 2. Then we have item 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. Fine. We have a list of items on our web page. So you can see we have seven different items over here. Now let's style them as well. For that, what we'll do is we'll move to the head tag of our HTML file and we'll use the style tag over here. We'll write here inside this style tag hash sortable. This is the ID. Now we'll style these elements. We'll write here border. Border is going to be two pixels, solid in nature and black in color. Then we'll write here height. So let's say the height is 20 pixels for each box. Then we'll write here width. Width is going to be let's say 100 pixels. They are going to be rectangular in shape, not squares. So height and width is going to be different. Let's define the margin as well. Let's say margin is 10 pixels. Then we have text align as well fine so let's say we are writing here text align at the center save it now and here you can see we have all the boxes over here but it's still not working let's see what the problem is so you can see over here we have a mistake we have written here as LOID so we'll correct it we have solid over here now save it and you can see we have all the items over here we have seven items all are placed inside boxes now we did some basic styling here. Everyone can understand it because it's so basic. The next thing we have to do is to use the sortable interaction here. For that, we'll move to a JavaScript file. So here is a JavaScript file. Now we have to use this interaction in all the items. So we have to use it with the parent element to make each box movable within the area covered by the UL tag. 
so we'll be using the class attribute here we'll write here dollar now we are going to take a selector so for that we'll write here dot sort because this is the class name and then we'll write here dot sortable fine this is the interaction name it is basically a method that's why we are using parenthesis over here that's it guys the sortable interaction can do the rest of task by itself this interaction over here is already defined inside the jquery file all we need to do is to pass it as a method and jquery will take care of the rest we are done with it let's save the program save it and here you can see it on the browser that we are able to move a particular box now click on item 1 and you can see we are able to drag it and if we put it down here you can see all the other items adjusting themselves without any problem so we have already discussed that the sortable interaction has all the customizations of the draggable interaction by default let's use them what we'll do is we'll write here inside curly braces we'll write here let's say opacity this property we have used in the previous interaction as well so let's define the opacity as 0.5 then we have cursor we can write here cursor as let's say grabbing a hand like thing will come when we try to grab the boxes now now the next thing we are going to do is we are going to write here containment it can either be document or the parent so for now we'll be using parent over here then we have let's say delay and we'll define the delay in milliseconds so let's say the delay here is 300 milliseconds and the last thing we are going to do is we are going to write here distance fine we are going to write here 50 now so here we have all the customizations allowed by this interaction in jquery ui almost all of them are from the previous interaction that is the draggable interaction the distance here is in pixels and it means that this interaction will work only if we drag the element for 50 pixels save the program now try to move a box you can see we are not able to move a box until the distance reaches 50 pixels fine so this is how this distance property actually works now the delay property defines the time interval taken by the interaction so here the time interval is 300 milliseconds when we try to move a box it will take 300 milliseconds and then only the box will move so these are some of the few properties that I think are the most important to understand. You can find more from the API documentation present on the official jQuery UI website. Here's a task for you guys. What you have to do is to add an image in this program and then see if this works the same or not. Now that we have a good idea of what interactions are and how we can use them to make a more interactive web page, we can simply go through this new interaction in jQuery UI without a problem. If you haven't watched the last two parts wherein we discussed the draggable and sortable interactions, I'll suggest you to go through them and it will be easy for you guys to get this topic. The resizable interaction in jQuery enables any DOM element to be resizable. With the help of the cursor, we can grab the right or bottom border of any DOM element and drag it to the desired width and height. So let's go through this interaction quickly from the official website and then we'll see what we can do with this particular interaction to make our web page more interactive. So here we are on the official website of jQuery. Here's the resizable interaction. Click on it and it will take us to a new page. You can see we have a box over here which says resizable. What we can do here is we can grab the box either from the bottom or from the right side and you can see we are able to change the height and width of this particular box we have the option for certain customizations that we'll be going through after some time so i hope you guys must have got an idea by now about this resizable interaction let's use it in our program here we are in the vs code the first thing we'll be doing is we'll be adding an html element over here Let's use an image for now to get an idea of the syntax. So we'll add an image to a web page. For that, we'll write here inside the body tag. We'll use the div tag first. So we'll write here div. Now inside this, we'll write img. Source is going to be images. This is a folder in my computer. So right here, we'll write javen.png. Then we have id. So let's say the id for this image is img1 and then we have to set the alternate as well so let's say we are writing here javascript close this img tag save the program and you can see we have the image over here which is quite large in size so let's style this image as well we'll change the height and width of this particular image for that 
we'll write here inside the head tag we'll use the style tag so inside this we have the id as img1 for this particular image so we'll use it here then we'll define the height of this image so let's say the height of this image is going to be 250 pixels fine we'll also change the width of this image so for that we'll write here width let's say the width is going to be 250 pixels again now we'll write here border so let's say the border is going to be one pixel solid and black in color fine that's it we are done with this image save the program and you can see we have an image over here which is of 250 pixels in size the next task we have to do is to make this image resizable for that we have to use the resizable interaction only so we'll move to a javascript file this is a javascript file now inside here what we'll do is we'll try to access this particular image using the id attribute for that we'll write here dollar then inside double inverted commas we'll write the id so we have to write here hash img1 then we have to write the interaction name only so we'll write here resizable and then we'll use parenthesis because this is a method and i hope you guys are aware of all these things by now save the program and get ready to see what this resizable interaction can do with our dom element save it here if you can see we have something present in the bottom of this image we have an icon over here this is an indication for the user that this particular image or element is resizable. We can't resize the element from the left side or from the top because the interaction is already programmed in that way. We can grab the element from the right side if we try to grab it from here and if we try to resize it, you can see we are able to resize this image. Similar thing goes with the bottom part as well. We can resize this image from here as well. Now talking about the options we have in this interaction, we can use animations with this image to make it look more engaging to the user. So for that we have to write here inside this resizable interaction, we have to use curly braces for properties and then we'll write animate, we'll set this property to true, fine. Save the program and now you can see that the animation is taking place on resizing this image. If we try to resize this image, you can see the animation over here. It is working totally fine. Other properties include the containment option. We can limit the area of expansion of this image. We can restrict it to the parent element or to the document as well. We have discussed this property in the previous two interactions as well. So this property remains the same. We'll write here containment and we'll write here let's say parent. Fine. Now save the program. Before that we'll comment this animate property. Save it now. And here you can see we are able to resize this image but up to a particular extent. We are not able to resize it outside of the div tag. We can resize it from here as well. And you can see the div tag has its own area. We can't resize this image more than this. And we can also limit the maximum and minimum height of this image. For that we have to write here max height so let's say the max height is going to be 400 pixels then we'll write here max width the max width is going to be 400 pixels again we have to write here min height and min width as well so let's say the min height is going to be 150 pixels and the min width is going to be the same so we'll write here min width and then we'll write here 150 fine save the program and you can see we can now resize the image up to a specific height and width only if we try to increase the width you can see we are able to increase the width up to 500 pixels only and we are not able to increase the height because of this containment property we'll comment this as well save the program and now we'll be able to resize this image you can see on resizing it from the bottom we are able to resize it up to 400 pixels only same goes with the width as well now if we try to reduce the size of this image, you can see the minimum size is 150 pixels. So this is where the image stops. Same thing goes from the bottom end as well. Now this is the minimum size of this particular image according to these properties. The minimum height and the minimum width is 150 pixels. We can also use the ghost property. Instead of showing the actual image during the resizing, we can set the ghost option to true to show a semi-transparent part of the element. So let's do it here. What we'll do is we'll write here after this min width, we'll write ghost 
and we'll set this property to true. Save the program and now on resizing the image, you can see if we increase the size of this image, we have a semi-transparent image which helps us in resizing this image up to an extent. Same thing goes with the reduction of size as well. The last property we have is the aspect ratio of the image. We can either give a preserved aspect ratio or we can also give the boolean value. Both the values for this option will work totally fine. For example, if we write here after this ghost property, aspect ratio, and if we set this property to true, so before saving this, we'll comment this ghost property out, save the program, and now if we try to resize the image, you can see the size of whole image resizing in a proper manner. What else we can do here is instead of setting this property to true, we can also write here aspect ratio as 16 by 9. Now this is the preserved aspect ratio. Save the program and you can see the image resizing in a different manner now. You can see the aspect ratio of the whole image is changed. So these are the properties we have in this interaction that can help us make a more interactive or engaging website. I hope you guys got this. And with that, we come to the end of this interactions in jQuery tutorial. If you enjoyed watching the video, do give it a thumbs up, comment your doubts below and our experts will answer them for you. Thank you so much for being here. Watch out for more videos from us. Until then, keep learning and stay tuned to Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.